Hello, and welcome to Victory Chat with Jackie McKeever. I'm your host, Jackie McKeever. And on Victory Chat, we talk about everything from finance to faith to from books to business. And speaking of books, for season two, we're doing a special series called Behind the Author's Pen, where we interview authors from different genres. We put them in the hot seat and we ask them questions. We get all up in their business. <laughs> and we find out a little bit about the book. It's a way for us to get to know the author and the book. So, um, so today we have a special guest. Um, his name is Luke Girardi. That's Girardi. correct. Girardi. Yep. <laughs> his book is called Children of Violence. How are you doing? Jackie, I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for having me on your channel. Are you ready for a hot seat so we can get all in your business? Let's 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 get in my business. I'm a little bit nervous, but Go ahead. Don't be nervous. It won't be that difficult. It won't be difficult. The first question is, why did you write this book? Well, I, I've always enjoyed the, the art of storytelling, being engaged by it. Uh, I always noticed growing up when I talk to people, they like to listen. And I, I'm not a writer by trade, but I always dreamed about it. And after, I don't know, 13, 14 years, I decided to do something about it. I had a very strange childhood. Mm -hmm. And I started off by writing short stories, uh, loosely based on things that have happened to myself or my dad. And I took maybe six or seven of those short stories. And over the course of a year, I made a narrative for the book. And uh, my biggest surprise has been the reception of it and that people actually like it, which I did not expect. Cool. So how long did it take for you to write this book? Uh, I did the short stories probably four years ago, but putting it all together to make this project was probably about nine months to a year. Were there any uh, other delays in producing the book? The, the delays in producing the book were mainly my fear of releasing it. Mm. Uh, I talk a lot about uh, uh, subjects that are not necessarily taboo, but subjects that are sensitive. Yeah, sensitive, triggering, I guess. Uh, I, there's a lot of uh, abuse, uh, uh, abuse, drug abuse, uh, violence, obviously, with involving children. And uh, you, you talked, to, you said earlier, you talk a lot about faith. Uh, the book does cover more or less a loss of faith, unfortunately. Uh, and I, I was worried about being judged mostly by the people that I knew growing up but that's an unfounded fear because the people that would judge me they don't they're not going to read it anyway so True. so it all to all the haters they they don't even they don't even care you know yeah who is the book written for I, you know i i for adults i'd say younger adults people in their 20s and 30s but I've had reviews from all the way to women in their seventies. Wow. One of one of the uh, what I didn't expect was the for women to read it and like it so much. It seems more women like it, or maybe there's just more women readers. But I've gotten more feedback from women than I have uh, men. So I, I'm not sure what that's about, but I'll take what I can get, I guess. I know that's right. Come on. Don't question it. Just go with the flow. <laughs> um, have, have you, is this your first book? This is my first book. Yes. Um, will there be any other books for you in this genre or other genres? You know, I'm, there, there are writers, uh, short answer to your question is yes. But the, the longer answer, I guess, is there's some writers, I, I don't know, for example, Stephen King or 
Dean Koontz. They just have a book every nine months, every year. They just book, book, book. I, I don't think I'm that guy. I think I have one or two books. I just have something to say. And then I think I'm out. Uh, I am working on a project right now, which is also, uh, on, on a, it turned into a spinoff of this book. So, oh. you know, um, this is a little bit off the subject and stuff, but, uh, um, you mentioned your book has short stories and stuff. And so a lot of, uh, I want to call story. I, I like to say storytellers, um, cause story, the only difference between a storyteller and a writer is that, you know, a storyteller doesn't necessarily have to write their art, you know, but, um, audio books, if you really enjoy telling short stories, audio books are real popular, you know, people, uh, spending more money on audio subscriptions and stuff. And, you know, that's taken, I mean, I still love a physical book. I listen to audio books, physical books, and digital books. Like I can't get enough of books. But anyway, you're you're, at, you're absolutely right. So many people yeah. have come to me and said that you know you need to go audio book. I just haven't uh, done it yet. Uh, the good thing about this book, though, is it's a novella, so it's it's a short read. Most people read it in one setting or two settings, so it's only like oh, 130 pages. Oh, yeah. I wasn't saying you should do that. I was just saying that, you know, that's an option. That's yeah, an option. yeah. And it, it, it is something I have thought about. Cool. Um, what do you want readers to get out of this book? I, mostly just to entertain. What I've been seeing in, in a lot of movies and books lately is, and there's nothing wrong with this, but the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. You have a, a hero and he has a quest and Maybe there's a love interest and a goal and a, and a villain. I don't, I don't do any of that. I have flawed people in bad situations and see how they get out. I don't have answers for anything. So it's like real, like realistic stuff. It's, yeah. a, it's a fiction book, but it's based on real life. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I recently went through the book and there are I, about 20 stories in the book that are either just true or based off loosely fictionalized events. I don't want the reader to turn the page and say, I know where this is going. Yeah. You know? That's so. good. You had some out of the box thinking. That's good. Um, what, what other books or authors inspire you? You know, I really like uh, Cormac McCarthy. He wrote uh, No Country for Old Men, uh, The Road. Uh, I like Mario Puzo. He wrote The Godfather. Uh, <laughs> and I like uh, Chuck Palahniuk, wrote Fight Club. Um, it, Palahniuk's probably the, the one that's uh, influenced me the most, probably. I started reading him when I was probably too young to read that stuff. But th those are the three that come to mind. Cool. What advice would you give um, authors just writing their books? I no, there's a couple of things, but the first one that comes to mind is you need to spend, and this is how I did it, mm -hmm. 15, 15 minutes a day on your project. Now, sometimes that 15 minutes is just 15 minutes and you don't have anything, but at least you get a paragraph done or you re-edit something that needs some work and it's just 15 minutes sometimes that 15 minutes turns into three hours so as long mm -hmm. as you stay in that world every day you you'll make you'll feel like you've made some progress even though it's even if it's two sentences there's two sentences closer to the end cool that's some and good advice yeah and the other thing is don't be afraid of the content. I was very afraid of the content. Uh, I write uh, a lot about racism, mm -hmm. uh, a lot about uh, inner city violence, racism, things like that. And I was terrified that I would be painted as some, you know, racist kind of guy because the language in the book is realistic. You know, for example, I, I have uh, one of the characters in my book who, who is not a protagonist not a good guy he wants to join the clan and that's his one of his main goals and so his language is very 
well, not politically correct, if you will. And I, w- I was worried that I, I would be judged based on that. But it turns out the audience is smart enough to know that that's not me as a person. That's the bad guy character in a fiction novel. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to write about topics that I guess you're afraid to write about. That might be your masterpiece. It could be. Mm-hmm. So um, our final question is, could you give the listeners a, a sample or blurb from your book and let them know where they can purchase it? Yeah, first, yes. Children of Violence by Luke Girardi. Uh, the easiest place to order it is Amazon. It's on barnesandnoble.com. Walmart, Target, you can, uh, and if you're in Denver, it's in a few local shops, but the easiest place to get it is uh, on Amazon uh, or my website, lukegirardi.com. That's L-U-K-E-G-H-E-R-A-R-D-I.com. And I guess to read for you, let's see here. So one of the characters is a is a hitman for the mafia mm. and his daughter loves him but he doesn't know how to show love and he's drunk all the time and he he loves her but he's not very emotional And so I'm going to read a portion of the, this sequence here. Uh, So they're going to drive into the city and he's drunk from the night before. This is the preface to this section. Uh, He's drunk from the night before. He always wears the same clothes, the same kind of outfit. He's got this black Lincoln that he drives and keeps in immaculate condition. And they're gonna go through a rough part of town and he's going to tell his daughter about a time when he was in the war. And it's a story that he tells all the time. Okay, so this is, um, might be some bad language in here, FYI. Okay. All right. Let's see. How you doing, Grace? We're going to go for a ride. Spend some dad-daughter time, okay? Got to talk to some people for a bit later on. You just sit there and behave. Then we'll, uh, we'll get lunch or something. Sit there and behave like I was a small child. And he always called me Grace. Everyone else on the planet called me Gracie because my name is Gracie. You know, I had to work for everything I got. Nothing was given to me. I grabbed life by the balls, squeeze and twist. Squeeze and twist, you catch that? He would always ramble on about this shit during the hangover, which was every day. You know, sweetheart, I got a story I don't think you ever heard before. I think you're old enough to hear this. Some serious shit. Listen up, kid. Which meant one thing. An army story I'd heard at least a hundred times. Probably about Afghanistan. Probably about him and Chris. Probably about him getting stabbed. Probably about how many people he killed while in the service. Probably about how the war was all bullshit. Probably. So all this shit's going down and it's going down bad. Me and Chris get separated from the unit. Windier and shit in the middle of all the chaos and gunfire and bombs. It got silent. No wind, no sand, no bombs, no guns, no nothing. Chris and I turn the corner in an alley and there he is. Just a kid. He's got this big ass kitchen steak knife. I'll be honest, I hesitated. Me, hesitate. Can you believe it? I don't give a shit about anybody, except, you know, you and Ma. This motherfucker stabs me twice, happens so fast. Once in the leg, once in the gut. So Chris shoots the fucker, right? But it's this weird shooting, where you think the blood's gonna come out the other side, make a mess, but it doesn't. I don't know why. Usually point blank shots are nasty, usually. We were low on ammo, surrounded. At least I thought we were. Fucking cowards were in the process of retreating. Chris only shot him twice, but he wasn't dead yet. He was screaming and wiggling around. We didn't want anyone to hear him. Chris caves his melanin with the butt of his gun. 
I'm going to skip a little bit. Gets a little graphic. <laughs> I'll tell you something else. Your stomach muscles ain't no joke. Ain't like the movies where some guy gets stabbed or shot, can still crawl or walk. I dropped hard, didn't even feel the leg wound, even though later I was told it was worse than the two stabs. Dad turned the key, backed out of the driveway, straightened out the wheel. I remember all the details of that day except where we were going. I guess that's because we never made it there. We drove and he continued his blabbering. That was good. Y'all go get that book. <laughs> oh, that was good. I enjoyed that. That was just a little sample. I can just imagine the rest of it. <laughs> so, so the other characters, uh, so that's Gracie. Her, she grows up in a nice, in the nice suburbs. But a lot of the book is about what happens behind closed doors. You don't know. You see the outside, everything's fine. But you don't know what goes on on the inside. The, the other characters, really quick. One is uh, named Robbie. He lives in a, in a project in the inner city. And his mother is a prostitute. And his mom's boyfriend is a pimp. And there's a lot of drugs and violence in mm. that line. Uh, Reeves is a uh, grows up in a cult, which a Christian cult. And I'm not bashing Christianity, I'm bashing mm -hmm. religious extremism that teaches you you have to fight, uh, physically fight in the upcoming apocalypse, which is going to happen at any time. And um, and all these stories connect at the end and uh to a shocking ending mm. i've i've had people tell me they've thrown the book that people say they love it i've had people <laughs> say they they have to read it again um or at least the first half because it all it all comes around cool well that's amazing well thank you so much for agreeing to be on our show and let us get a little bit closer behind your author's pen. Y'all make sure you subscribe to this channel and um, both the YouTube channel and the podcast. Sharing is caring, share it with someone who needs it. Go out and support Luke, buy that book, buy his upcoming books. And whatever you do, remember your victory starts here. Bye Luke. Hi, thank you for having me.